Amazing church. Wonderful to see you all in church and worshiping the Lord. Really, it's a great worship time. Let's give the musicians and the worship team another big hand. Really appreciate them. Well, Pastor Stella will be on her way back on Tuesday. She had the most wonderful meetings in Africa. She spoke to about 2,000 people that were there. And uh, she had a great time. Imagine, here's this Chinese woman from, from Malaysia huh? speaking there. And I, I was very, very angry because uh, I thought they will put her up in a real mud hut, you know. But no, they put her up in the nicest hotel. Not fair. You know? <laughs> not fair. I was not happy. And uh, everywhere she went, there was a group of people that followed her, you know. I go anywhere, I go alone. So, <laughs> so uh, but it was great hearing that, and they had meetings from the morning right until night. I mean, I can't do that, but, but they, she's like that. She loved it, and she loved being there. She loves Africa, and, and so I told her, you can stay there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you... <laughs> You, you got to have a big heart, you know, I mean, like she has. She can go to a strange place like Africa and love people and, and do all that kind of things. I'm very choosy, you know, I, I'm very selective, but praise the Lord for that. Amen. Good to see you all in church. Everybody happy? Good. Today I want to talk about what your eyes mean. And of course, when I wrote this message, I entitled it, Your Eyes, uh, Monica got nervous. She thought I was talking about her eyes. <laughs> you see, Jesus said these words, and, and they are very, very powerful. He said, if you will get the focus of what you are looking at straight, if you will focus on the right thing, he says, your whole body, in other words, your whole life, it'll be settled. That's all it takes, the focus of our eyes. If everything we see, everything we look at is bad and we interpret everything is going to be bad, everything will be wrong, your whole body will be affected, not just physically, your whole lifestyle will be affected. Now, some people think that, well, when we come to church, nowadays the church speaks a lot about motivation, what to do, principles. Well, I want you to know that the Bible is God's manual on how to live on this planet. He made it. He wrote it. He got a few people to write it. And he gave us answers to everything that you need. So some people say, well, I go to church, I don't feel emotional. I, I want you to know, I've been married for 36 years. And I don't feel emotional 36 years. In fact, 99% of the time, it's not emotions that kept our marriage together. Are you with me? Yeah. All right? It's, it's following principles every day and keep it going. Like holding hands. You know, at our age, we still hold hands. I know Kim Ju and Siu Gyok do. I mean, you're married to a nice chick, you better hold her hand. <laughs> but they don't do it because they are feeling emotional at that moment. They do it because it's a habit that they've been doing it for the past many years, and it's a good habit. And they don't need to be told to say, I love you, or I'm sorry, or give each other a peck, not a slap, a peck <laughs> on the cheek every once in a while. Hello, darling. It's not, there's no emotion. The emotions will come later. But you start doing things out of a practice. Now, the Bible is not just to get your, your emotions going. I'm not here to stir your emotions, but I'm here to tell you how to be a successful person. The goal of our church is your best life. Everything that we plan in this church, every sermon, every leadership, every prayer meeting, every connect group is planned to build you to become you and your family and your entire life and the generations to come to build you to become a successful person 
And that doesn't come by emotion. You know, you don't feel like getting up and coming to church, but you do it. You don't feel like this is a good time to give beyond your tithe and to, to give big offerings because the economy is bad and everybody's complaining about the GST and on and on and on you hear. But you do it because you understand this is how it works in the Bible. It's the principles that God has put there. So Jesus, are you with me so far? These are principles etched by God. I don't feel that God is with me, but I know He is with me because the Bible says, I will, Jesus said, I will never leave you. Never. I will. <laughs> People can leave you. Yeah. Your emotions can come and go. One moment they'll love you, next moment they'll hate you. One moment they'll love you, next moment they'll hate you. One moment they'll promise you heaven and oh, nothing. I love you until I die. They sing all the love songs and then the next moment they'll forget you. Because we are human. But God is far superior than any relationship. He said, I will never leave you. I will, as far as the east is from the west, how can the east ever meet the west? It can never meet the, each other. He said, my mercy and my love towards you is like that. It's so wide. I will never betray you. I will never leave you. And then he gives us the principles on how to live on that mindset. And he said this, and this is in uh, Matthew chapter 6. But if your eyes, let's go back to the, yeah, verse 23, is that right? Okay. The eye... Is the lamp of the body. The eye is, is that right? The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Now, no man, Jesus said, can serve two masters. He didn't say no man should serve two masters. He said no man can serve two masters. It's impossible, even with God. You try to make your boss your God, or your money, your job, your God, and then try to serve God? Uh-uh. In God's principle, cannot work. There's only one God and one master. No man can serve two masters. Are you following me? Now, these are the words of Jesus. No man. He said, either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Everybody say cannot. cannot. You cannot serve God and money. Are you with me? Yes. All right. So he says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Turn to somebody and say, don't worry. Yeah. So, so, so some of us are worriers, not warriors. We are worriers. We just, every time, even got nothing to worry, you worry about, hey, how come today I got nothing to worry about? <laughs> you, you, you are a worry. You're a compulsive, addicted worrier. Stop it. Everybody shout, stop it. Stop it. Stop, it. stop worrying. Why? I'll tell you what. Jesus said, stop worrying. Listen. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. Some of you need to probably really stop it because you... Oh, Lord. Listen, this is very important. God wants us to live a non-anxious life. Now, we all get anxious, but God is a non-anxious presence. You ever see Jesus stopping by somewhere and saying, before I eat this fig tree, I wonder whether it's organic or not. <laughs> huh? Do you ever see Jesus getting worried, saying, Oh, Lord, uh, Father, I wonder if I die, I will ever rise from the dead. He knew that what the Father said will happen. So we serve a God who is a non-anxious presence. How come my computer went off? Oh, Lord, how am I going to preach now? Didn't charge her. I thought I, I did charge. All right, he says, what can I help you with? See, the computer's talking back to me. That's rude, right? Okay, here we go. It's back. I'm back. Now, this is what Jesus said. Now, listen to this. It's not your life more than food and the body more than clothes. 
Look at the birds of the air. Do you, they do not sow or reap or store away in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? Answer the question. You are more valuable than them. Listen to me. God knows every single bird that flies. Every single bird. And yet none of these birds are going to die and go to heaven. You are going to die and go to heaven. Jesus didn't spill his blood to save birds. He spilled his blood to save you. Are you not more valuable then why are you worrying? He said, look at the fields. He said, look at the flowers. Why do you worry? He says, and why do you worry about clothes? Look at the flowers on the field that grow. They do not labor. They do not spin. Yet I tell you that not even one of, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like these. If that is how your God, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field that are here today and tomorrow are thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry what you will eat or drink or what you will wear. For the pagans, the people who are not in a connection with God, pagans, that's how they talk in our world. Pagans, you talk like them. You talk like people in the world. GST, everything, tau you, gone up. Huh? Eggs, more expensive. Why are you worry? You, you, you mean to say your God is like their God? You talk like them, that's why? He said if your eye is healthy, your whole conversation, your whole meditation, your whole action will be non-anxiety. You won't have high blood pressure, heart failure. Oh my God, what's happening? The pagans talk like that. Some of you Christians need to be slapped on the head for behaving just like your pagan friends. Now, they will send the chats and they will tell you about all the bad things that are happening. But do you need to behave like that? Now, now you're saying no, lah. Because I'm scolding you. <laughs> I'm not scolding you. I love you, okay? But that's what Jesus said. He said, get your eyes focused. Stop repeating what everybody is saying. Be original. For once, make up your mind that it's going to stop that kind of lifestyle. Maybe your mother used to talk like that. Maybe your grandparents used to talk like that. Always talking about how bad everything is. Okay, you can't blame them. But you are a child of God. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. You operate by his principles. Oh, Pastor, I don't know why I get all this. Shut up. What are you focusing on? Which book have you been reading? Tom and Jerry cartoons. <laughs> or, or have you been reading this? It's called the Bible. Yeah, what have you been reading? What has your eyes been looking at? What have you been focusing on? If God is your God and this is his book, then act it. Jesus said, don't worry. Stop it. Not going to help you. Don't worry about it. He says, but the pagans run after these things. Your heavenly father knows what you need. You think God the father, I am an earthly father. I know what my daughter needs. Not all the time, but when I know what she needs something, I'll help her. I've done that with all my kids. I know what some of you need. And if, you, if I can help you, I'll help you. Now God is your heavenly father. You think he doesn't know what you need. Some of you need a boyfriend. God will get you one. Don't run and grab anyone that's wearing a pants. <laughs> Take your time. Be selective. Be choosy. You <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't rush. Some of you need a girlfriend. Yeah. Not every chick that walks past you is going to be, you know, date them. I don't care how many girlfriends you have. Finally, when you decide to marry one, marry her. Don't be a dipstick and keep on saying, I don't know whether I can, I'm not sure. I hate people like that, you know. Just make up your mind, either yes or no. No is no, yes is yes. Get on with life. You know, your heavenly father knows what you need. 
But we try to think like he doesn't know. So he says, this should be your focus, all right? He said, if your eye is healthy, whole body will be healthy. If you got your focus right, everything will work out right. You don't have to pray for things God already said he gave you. The Bible says, my God will supply all my needs. So don't have to pray about God, please supply my need. He said, he will supply all your needs. Amen. Amen. Above and beyond what you can imagine. But this is what he said in verse 33, and pay attention. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God. First, that should be your focus. Now, that doesn't mean 24 hours a day, you're just reading the Bible, praying. I'm not saying that. But our mindset, our focus should be like this. Whatever that happens, your medical report, your bank account, whatever that's happening in the economy, Begin to focus first immediately on the word of what does the Bible say about that? Oh, I cannot serve. I'm too tired. The, this, this, is that in your Bible? Show me. Oh, I am tired. No, the Bible says serve the Lord with gladness. If you don't serve him with gladness, you'll serve your enemies. And what are your enemies? Sickness, depression. You want to serve them? Or you want to serve God? Young people, old people, every one of us have got one shot in this life. And God is saying, take that chance with me. I'm going to bless you beyond your wildest dream. I'm going to open the windows of heaven. I'm going to rain upon you blessing after blessing. You will be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed lying down. You'll be blessed rising up. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country. Every place you set your foot in. I will be there for you. Now focus on that, God says, and everything will come to pass. Seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So this kind of message doesn't get you emotionally charged up because I'm going to be sharing with you two or three principles, some instructions about a, an Old Testament example that had a New Testament experience. You know, every once in a while you read in the Old Testament and, and you'll see a glimpse, uh, a picture, a photo, an idea, uh, a shadow of what is to come. So you find people like Joseph, for example, betrayed by his brother. That's a picture of how Jesus was betrayed or you and I have experienced betrayal. But then because he kept his attitude right and he always said the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord, of course, he never felt like God was with him all the time. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. And then he prospered and they tried to betray him, throw him in jail. We, we see pictures, snapshots of what we can have because we are children of God, because we have a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. As I said just now, we teach not just to get you emotionally stirred, but we preach the word to, to get results. The, end, the bottom line of all my preaching is so that I want to see results in your life. So when I look at Michelle and Esther, and I look at their family and her husband, Joe, who is coming to church now, and I see results, and I say, that's what we want to see happening. The wife is changed. It's not that the husband needed to be changed. Probably she needed to be changed. She's a beautiful girl. Husband fell in love with her, loved the kids, is in church, is a, never misses a prayer meeting when he's in town. You know, he's a brand new Christian, I look at different people. I look at Jonathan, for example, and the change that... And I say, that's what this preaching is all about. Look at Taizo and, and, and all of you, others that are here, Jane and, and Edward and all of you. And, and I look at you and I say, God, that's what it's all about. That's, I go home and I, I, I say, God, that's what it's all about. It, it didn't happen overnight, but over time, I want to see results. Coming from the word of God. The Bible says he will confirm his word with signs. And he doesn't confirm my word, what Pastor Joe thinks. That's not him. He confirms his word with signs and wonders following. Amen. And every time we preach the word and the principles of God, you may not feel like God touched you. You may not, oh, how come I went to church? I didn't feel anything. It's not about your feelings. It's after church, what you do, that's going to produce the results. And we want to see results. Can you say amen? amen? Speaking about results, there was this uh, uh, priest who died and, and he went to heaven. 
and um, God said, my son, uh, come over here. And what is your name? And he said, I'm father so-and-so. And what did you used to do, my son? He said, uh, I, 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 I served you in a chapel of St. Church something or other. And, and the Lord said, well done, you know, come on in. And uh, told Peter, give him a beautiful uh, cotton robe and send him to his house, which was a beautiful little cabin by the woods. And the priest was happy. But at the same time, another man died and also came. And he walked into the presence of God. And, and God said to him, uh, and, and what is your name? And, and he said, my name is Aramagam, son of Pichitale. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and he said, very welcome, my son. And what do you used to do? Oh, I was a bus driver in India. I drive from Kerala to Chennai. I drove all over the world. And God said, quickly, Peter, give him a purple robe. Put a gold crown on his head and give him to his mansion, which is like the Taj Mahal. The priest came up and protested. He said, Lord, I served you in your house. And all you gave me was a cotton coat and a small cabin. This man comes from India and he's a bus driver. And you give him the Taj Mahal and all these wonderful things. And the Lord said to him, my son, when you serve me and when you preached and when you pray, the people slept. He said, but this Indian driver, when he drove in India, people prayed. They cried out, my God, save me, forgive me. I'm sorry, please don't let me die. Oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is results. God wants Results. So don't just say, I'm going to church. Oh, I praise the Lord. I'm feeling so anointed. Oh, the Lord touched me. I feel so wonderful. Oh, I felt the worship was wonderful. What's the result of all of that? You are supposed to be bearing much fruit. Okay, don't say amen. That's all right. <laughs> results. Everybody say results. Success is not an attainment. Success is not just doing something well. Success is an atonement. Jesus paid a price for you so that you will have abundant life. We live in a world where people are going for success. I want you to know you are a success the moment Jesus died on the cross for you. And when you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, we are coming close to Easter. You're going to have a very great speaker coming, Brother Eddie. He used to be a Buddhist monk or something like that. Uh, built many temples and then he got gloriously saved. So he's coming to share his testimony. Bring your non-Christian friends on Easter Sunday. When, you, when we come close to Good Friday and Easter, it is one of my favorite times in, in the year but I don't just think about it during Easter time. I think about it all the time. Because of what Jesus did, I am where I am, I'm who I am, I'm what I am by the grace of God. You know, when Jesus hung on the cross, this is just a sidetrack from my preaching. You know, it's not one of these crosses that you see in movies, nice planks put together. It was just a tree. In many times in the New Testament, the cross was called a tree. It was just branches cut off, put together, rugged, ugly. It was meant to cause physical pain, the worst kind of torturous pain that the Roman, evil Roman mind engineered. But the pain that Jesus suffered was not just physical pain, but the, the spiritual pain, the emotional pain, the crushing of the sin of the whole world, yesterday, today, and forever, was put on him on that moment. And that's why he cried out for you and for me. We were supposed to be on that cross, but he cried out for you and for me. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, God forsook Jesus just for that moment because our sin was on him. He will never, ever forsake you, ever 
You can reject him. You can walk away from God. God will never walk away from you. People have done that. They've said bye-bye to God, bye-bye to church. Oh, they, can, they get blessed by God. God has healed them, saved them, prospered them. Some of them just walk away. God will never walk away from you. Once in history, 2,000 years ago, God was rejected. Jesus was rejected. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, he did all that not so that you can give up in life and be a lousy Christian. He did all that so that you can be a successful person and glorify God while you have this short time on this planet. That you will bear much fruit for the glory of God. Success is not an attainment, my friend. Success is an atonement. Blood was spilled for you and for me 2,000 years ago. And as we begin to come forward towards Easter, I want to just remind you, it's not, it's not who you are, it's what God has done. So here is an Old Testament example of a New Testament experience. This is a man called Jabez. His story is very short, nothing much said about him, but it is there in the Bible. And it encourages me a lot, because here's a man that we see nothing much is said about him, but when he began to shift his focus, something happened in his life. So let's read 1 Corinthians Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And this is what it says. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, which means pain, suffering. Imagine your mother calling you a name, you know, Imagine for those of you who are Chinese, your mother call you Xiao Gu. That's not a nice name to be called when you grow up. You have to live with that. Or if you're a guy and, and your mother call you Susan or something. <laughs> you, have to, you have to be really tough to grow up with a name like that. Now this guy was called Pain. And probably he caused his mother a lot of pain. But the Bible said this about him that he was more honorable than all his brothers. He had a horrible name, a horrible past. And then let's look at verse 10. He says, Now Jabez called on the God of Israel. He knew that God is a covenant God. So it's written there, he didn't just call on God, he called the God of Israel, which means he knew something about the contractual, covenantial deal, relationship that God had. When the Bible says the God of Israel is talking about God who made a covenant. And God never breaks His covenant. God makes a covenant and He keeps it. So, He wasn't feeling emotional when He prayed. There was no mention of Him feeling high spiritually. But there came a time in His life where He began to sh shift His focus. His eyes became healthy. And the Bible is very clear. And he prayed this to God. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Now that's an old King James Version. For today's version, I would say bless me definitely. Bless me abundantly. Come on, lay it on me. That's how I would talk to God. I mean, very few people today would say, Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Unless you are Shakespearean English. But when you are in dire straits, but you get your eyes off your problem, off yourself and stop loving yourself or comparing yourself with other people who are worse than you but are doing better than you, who are better than you, not as good as you. If you'll get your eyes off these things and if your eye is healthy, it's a simple principle, shift your eyes if they are healthy. Start focusing on the Word of God. On what God says. He says, Oh Lord, that you would bless me. Enlarge my territory. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't play games with God. Well, God, if you want to bless me, you know, I know you're very busy. And there are a lot of other needy people in India and Africa and China and Indonesia. Never mind. You got one small blessing, just bless me, I'll be very happy. He didn't play that kind of game. He came straight out. He says, God, bless me indeed. Bless me. And God loves people who pray like that. Bold prayers. 
He says, bless me, enlarge my territory, and that your hand would be on me, that keep me from evil, that I will not cause you pain. And God granted him his request. Amen. How many of you would like to go back home and see what you prayed for or have been praying for in church? Go back home, get answers in the mail, on the computer, or at your door. Miraculous answers. Doctor checks you again and says, I can't understand what's happened. I may have diagnosed you wrongly. There's something wrong with this report. You're totally fine. Or your bank comes up and says, you know, um, or your job, your boss, some... How many of you would like results in your life? Huh? God kind of results in your life. Can I see your hand? All right, I want to just share with you three or four points and then we'll close. Number one, the reality of life. His name was Jabez. Now, some of us, thank God, have grown up in nice families. We ought to be really grateful, really, because we are a small percentage of a big percentage of people out there in the world who don't have it nice. So if you've got a good mama and a good papa and you've got a good family, thank God, thank God, and thank God. Don't grumble. Thank the Lord for what you have. Because I meet with real people every day of my life as a pastor. I meet with people with marriage breaks ups and divorces and, and financial situations and sicknesses. The other day I went to see my friend uh, in the university hospital. I haven't been there for a long time, but I went there because my friend was there and I was glad to see him. He had a, he had a bypass, a triple bypass, and after that bypass he had a stroke, so he's lost his memory, but he's walking down the hospital corridor and he sees me, can hardly lift his hand to wave, and I wave him and we hold hands and I walk back to his room. The hospital is packed with suffering people. My heart broke once again. When you begin to see that people are sick and are in hospital and are in need, I go back to his room. It's not a men's room. There's a lady there in, in another bed. I look over at her. They were draining blood out of her nose. Her eyes are open. She's in pain, but she cannot scream. My heart breaks. I look on the next bed. There's this Indian man sitting there. He also had a bypass. His chest has been wide open and all the stitch marks. Look across, Chinese man, same thing. With the oxygen mask, heart wide, chest wide open, stitch marks. And I pray with my friend and they're all looking. All these three people are looking. And I, after praying with my friend and talking to him, and then I'm, I'm about to go. But I can't leave the hospital room. I walk over to the first bed that is over there. And I said, sir, I'm a pastor. Can I pray for you? Now, I don't wait for people to answer. I just say, can I pray for you? Thank you, in Jesus' name. <laughs> I just go for it. I can't take it. I believe that my God, you know, wants us to just push through. The price that Jesus paid for suffering humanity is so big. I don't have time for people or to be nice or to ask permission. I prayed for him and he said, thank you very much. I go over to the Chinese man. I said, sir, he's already watched me praying for my friend. Now praying for this, he's watching me coming and he's shaking his head. He's saying no. I said, sir, I'm a pastor. Can I pray? I pray for him. He's saying no. In Jesus name, I pray for him. I walk over to the girl and she looks at me. She cannot talk. Her neck has been lacerated. I don't know whether it was an accident. Her arms were broken. They were stitching her up with big staples, staples to keep her head in motion. She, she can't talk. And I'm asking her, can I pray for you? She's going, pray for her. There's suffering people all around the world. Open your eyes, Christians. Some of us just want to come to church to be entertained, to be treated. You don't need another sermon. You're already saved. You're going to heaven. You don't need my counseling, my visitation. You don't need me to come and manja with you and talk to you. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I have to tell you the truth. You got a problem? I'll pray with you. I'll fight it to the end. In Jesus' name. But other than that, I will not be there to always sit down with you. There's a lost humanity here in Clank. Some of you struggle to even come to church 
You need to be called up by your friends to come for connect group at this stage in your life. But there are suffering people all around us who don't know God, don't know Jesus Christ. They're lost. Jesus said the harvest is truly plenteous. He, he's moved with compassion when he looks at suffering people. And this kind of a man, like Jabez, gets the attention of God. He comes from a suffering background. But what made him more honorable? What makes you more honorable than all the others that should be more honorable than you? This is what he did. The second thing that he did. In fact, before I go into that, look at James chapter 1, 25. This is a scripture. I want you to know. James chapter 1, verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. The King James says, the perfect law of liberty. This is not the Ten Commandments law. It never gave them liberty. But the perfect law, which is Jesus Christ is Lord over everything, which is Christ in you is greater than he that is in the world which is, my God shall supply all my needs, which is, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, that the righteousness of God is righteousness, peace, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. When you focus on the things that God wants us to focus on and stop trying to play religious games, it's not telling you to become a legalistic here because legalism only brings bondage. Here, it's a perfect law of freedom. Liberty. Ten Commandments didn't set anybody free, bound them. God wanted to bless them and said, I want a family so I could love. They said, "Uh uh-uh, no God, we don't want to be your family. Just tell us what we should do and get out of our face. So God said, okay, I'm going to give you the commandments to show my purity, my morality, how pure I am. So God said, now do this, and they couldn't do it. And the Ten Commandments was broken from day one. And I look at some Christians, they are more broken than the Ten Commandments, but they're still trying to keep it. They're trying to live their lives by the rules of God. Now, when you live your life according to the perfect law of God, it brings freedom. In other words, there are principles you've got to apply. You've got to look at them. God said to Joshua, on my word, meditate day and night. It will bring you success. Think about what God says. Change the way you look at things. Begin to meditate on what God says. Stop trying to do it in your own way. Say, God, this is what you say. I believe it. Declare it. You saw Sunita lead in worship just now and she was declaring Lordship of Jesus over Clang. Lordship of Jesus over our life. Lordship of Jesus over our sicknesses. Lordship of Jesus over our family. That's what you need to be meditating on. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's not subject to anything that has been thrown against us. Jesus is Lord. Begin to declare that in your life unashamedly. And he says, that man, not forgetting what he has heard, But doing it, they will be blessed in all they do. So Jabez did this. Number two, he made a small shift. That's all. Today, you can make a small shift. That's all you need to do. You may not feel emotional. It doesn't come with feeling. Maybe some of you need to stop talking negatively. Small shift. Just stop being a worrier. Some of you need to stop cursing yourself. Ayo, I'm so bad. La. Lousy, la. I stupid la, myself. Maybe just try, just try today, okay? Just try, stop doing that. And when you catch yourself doing it, oh Lord, I'm sorry. I... Maybe it was a habit that you picked up over years because your mama used to talk like that. Maybe your relatives all talk like that. Maybe you are the type that, that likes to always find out what's going on in the political realm of Malaysia as if you can change it. You can change it by voting it or voting it out. Other than that, why are you so upset? Why are you making it like it's your personal tragedy? What DAP did to AMNO and what AMNO are gathering together to get all the Chinese and the, uh, Chinese and the Indians out of the country? Why are you so capable? You think they can, you think, you know, that's going to happen? 
But you, you focus on it. And all your friends are like you. They text you about all the bad things. Why not just try to stop it for a little while? Try. Are you listening to me? Just make it shift. This is what he did. Why did he become more honorable than all his brothers? He made a small shift. For years, he was called Jabez. He said, today it stops. How many of you would like to say, today this stops? I don't know what the it might be in your life. But you can just stop saying, oh, well, you know, I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a second chance because I'm an Indian or because I'm a woman or because I, I'm an, of another race. Uh, I'm not getting all the lucky. Just stop that. Just stop that and make a shift. Just say, I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Promotion neither comes from the east or from the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. The Lord is my promoter. The Lord has got my number. The Lord will raise me up. He is the glory and the lifter of my head. Just, just start talking like that. If you run out of words, get this book. It's called the Bible. And sometimes you don't even have this book. It's on your apps. Every one of you can have it on your phone, on your whatever, computers. Every one of us can start just flicking it through and start to say, for by the grace of God, I know that Jesus, though he was rich, yet he became poor for my sake, so that I might become rich. That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. That though he was rich, yet he became poor for my sake. That though I am poor through his poverty, I might become rich. Once you begin to make a small shift like that, which brings us to the third thing that Jabez did, he began to ask big. I want you to stop playing small prayers with God. I want to encourage you to start praying big prayers. God, bless me. Indeed. Some of you need to stop saying, Pastor, will you pray for me? Why can't you talk to God? You think I'm the mediator? Sorry. There is no mediator to God. For those of you who are my Catholic friends, I love you. I love and adore Mary, the mother of Jesus. I preach about her. Her example is fantastic. She's not your mediator. She's a wonderful woman. She was an instrument that God used. She's not your mediator. You don't have to go through St. Peter or St. Paul. You go direct to God. And you say, God, in Jesus' name, he gave you one name. One name that is above all names. That's the name of Jesus. And pray big prayers. Oh, God, heal my daughter. Oh, God, touch my son. He's gone away from God. Give him back to me. I claim it in Jesus' name. And get on with life. Tomorrow, oh God, I fight this battle, this spiritual battle. My husband, he has been rejecting you. But Lord, I intercede for him. I claim in Jesus' name, my husband will be saved. And then, doll up yourself. Do some makeup. Look better. He might accept you. Then he might accept the Lord. But you know, that's just advice. I'm just saying. And uh, oh God, my financial situation, give me a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I don't want to be having just enough. I had not enough. Now I became a Christian. I've just enough. But I want more than enough so that I can be a blessing. Pray big prayers. Pray it in Jesus' name. God's not going to say, how dare you talk to me like that? Or oh, you're asking me all these carnal things. The Bible said, Jesus said, your father knows you need these things. Pray big prayers. He said, Lord, bless me. And the fourth thing that he prayed was a prayer of responsibility. Now listen to me. God will bless you. Are you with me? I'm talking about results will come. Some of you have seen the results already. In fact, we got so many testimonies of some of you who were healed. You were supposed to, do, to have been dead. Some of you, you were supposed to be bankrupt. Some of you, you were supposed to have committed suicide. I know your life. And I've seen how God has raised you up. So God has blessed you. Give him praise for that. But I'll tell you this. There are many people who have been blessed. And then as life goes on, they begin to forget their commitment and their walk with God. Now, Jabez realizes that. 
he realizes that with the miracles comes a responsibility. And this is what he prays. God, keep your hand on me so that I will not cause you pain. That was my name. But I'm not going to cause you pain. I may have caused others pain. Keep your hand so that I will not forget you, so that I won't go into evil, so that I won't think that it's my genius or it is my good looks or it is my connection to the right persons. That's where I am today. God, help me to always remember, I start with you and I'll end with you. Keep me. A lot of people forget. Let me tell you, I've been a pastor long enough to know a lot of people. As I'm baptizing them, I'll ask them this question. I'm looking at them. They're all standing there pious. They're all really very, very spiritual. They are looking for the heavens to open and God to do something fantastic. I'm looking at them like this, side eyes. You sure you're going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? You commit yourself. Yes, yes, Jesus, your Lord of your life. Yes, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I baptize hundreds of people throughout my 30-some years of being a minister. And I'll tell you something. I thank God most of them, if not all of them, are doing well and going on in the Lord wherever they are. But there'll always be one or two. Oh, well, I'm too busy to serve God. I don't have the time now. Because my business is so busy. Because my work is so active. I got so many things to do. I'm sorry, I cannot come for the prayer. I cannot come for the connect group. I'm sorry you won't see me in church. And I'm thinking, that's the kind of prayer you need to pray. Lord, when you bless me, put your hand on me. Keep me from pain. Keep me from evil so that I will not cause you pain. These are some very basic principles that God will say, I'm going to grant you your request. And the Bible says, and God granted Jabez his request. And far beyond what he could ever think or imagine, God blessed that man so greatly. And I want to pray today for every one of you that you will see results, results, I mean dynamic results in your life. Amen? Amen. I mean, if you're sick, you're going to be getting stronger and healthier. Your life is going to be, if you, you know, is going to be strengthened by God and healed by the stripes of Jesus. You'll be healed. For those of you who are struggling financially this year in the name of Jesus, as Sharon was saying just now, Lord, in 2015, this, this is a Christian talk. Christians can talk like that against all that is happening in 20, 2015. Lord, bless, this is going to be the greatest year. What a bold statement. Now, people can talk like that because they've been having their eyes healthy. Their focus has been on God. And so they can pray prayers like that over the church. This is not just hopeful, hopeful, I'll be lucky and, you know, I wish that everything... No, no, these are principles that God has laid down in His eternal word. It will never pass away. You can take it to the bank. You can say, God, if you did it for Jabez, do it for me. He's not going to get angry with you. He said, I love it when you talk like that. I love it when you talk to me like a daddy. I love it when you trust me with your whole life. I paid a price for you because I'm that serious for your salvation. I love it when you take what I've given to you so seriously. So therefore, my child, I want to bless you. And I believe, I, I just feel the anointing in this place that God is going to just release some, some blessing. Oh man, a life. It's going to come from heaven and it's going to affect everything that you do on earth. I'm going to pray for that right now in Jesus' name. But let's sing this worship song that we did just now um, and focus on Him completely. My soul magnifies the Lord. Will that be good? Did, you were singing that just now, right? No, no. Yeah? The third song, yeah? Yes, that, that'll be fantastic. I want us all to stand. I want you to sing like this is your song. I know it was written by other people. It was taken from... The book of Samuel as well. I think Hannah sang that song. My soul magnifies the Lord. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she sang that song. But let it be your song coming from your heart this morning. Amen? Amen. I want you to start singing. I will magnify your God. You know, God wants to be magnified in your life. Whether you magnify Him or not, 
He's already magnified, but He wants to be magnified in your life today in a real and in a powerful way. So I want us to join together as we sing in Jesus' name. I have found exceeding joy. Jesus answered when I call this name that has saved me. Pure love that embraced me. Mercy, grace, eternal life. Bought from darkness to his life while lost in my sin he raised me and made me live my soul magnifies the Lord my heart draws in God my Savior
God sees all that pain as he saw Jabez. But today it can change. It can change. All you need to do is shift your eyes, your focus. Jesus said, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be healthy. Just change your focus. I want you to start beginning to think, this is not my heritage. This is not my life. It ends here today in the presence of God. I'm serious about it. You need to tell God that I'm serious. I'm not going to go back to that same old junk. I'm not going to go back to that same old lifestyle or addiction or, or whatever that's been holding you back. Today, in the presence of God, this moment, that can change. You can just got to do. Focus. Change your focus. Get it off yourself and get it off impossible. Get it off what cannot be done and get it off on, get it on Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. Listen to me. Look at me for a little while. The cross that Jesus died on, the Bible says in Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgression. So whatever transgression, whatever mess up, he took it. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement, the punishment that was supposed to be put on us, he took it on himself. You know, as I said just now, the cross is not some nice uh, plywood, you know, planed, nice, beautiful wooden construction it was just ugly pieces of branches put together it was not 30 foot high because the bible tells us that people walking by spat on jesus they called him names so you cannot spit 30 foot high you can spit poor you know so it was probably just about six inches or one foot above the ground that's why it was so torturous when he hung there he was every time he pulled himself up to catch another breath he was suffocating slowly crucifixion was death by suffocation because your collarbone began to hold you so they would come and break the leg so that when the leg is broken you cannot pull yourself much and you die he did all that so that you can say i'm free in christ i'm free I'm going to live for me to live is Christ. I'm not going to take all that's happening in my life as the parcel of my inheritance. No. This is my inheritance, the word of God. I can do all things through Christ. I'm a winner. I'm successful. I'm prosperous. I'm blessed to be a blessing to other people. Begin a change, a shift, a small shift. Like a ship. Small shift, shift. And the whole course has changed. Today that starts with you as we pray together. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands if you want to see a shift in your life. Oh, Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Come on, begin to pray out loud. This is your life I'm talking about. This is your life. If you're not ready to make a shift in your life, nobody's going to pray for you. So don't wait for the service to be over and come for secret prayer. Right where you're standing, make a shift. Jesus, 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 help somebody. Help somebody, Lord Jesus.
said some of you are being healed right now in Jesus name some of you your bodies are beginning to get well the strength of God some of you your the power of God is touching your family the power of God is in this place the anointing is in this place breakthrough 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 is coming breakthrough curses are being broken things of the past washed up by the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus hallelujah kind of a service and to express yourselves like that but that's what it's all about God wants to give you results good results he wants to promote you he wants to desperately bless you because he loves you he knows the battle you are facing he knows what's going to happen tomorrow on Monday he knows the plan of the enemy is to take you down but he's got you covered He's your shield and your protector. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Turn to someone, give them a high five, and God bless you. Kind of a yes. Bless somebody in Jesus' name. Yes. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. All right.